right, you want to talk about uh, Galaxy a little bit? Like where Heck the inspirations yeah. came from? Yeah. yeah. I've always wanted to do a spaceship game. I, I grew up playing, you know, asteroids and um, talking about Solar Jetman earlier with Jeff. Just love that kind of physics-based gameplay. I really like my favorite games tend to be like the really kind of physics-y things. Like I love Wave Race. I love the Skate series by EA. Mm -hmm. Stuff where you can kind of get like your abilities don't necessarily progress. I mean, our game does, but the idea that you can just get really good at controlling it, a really simple play control. And I just love sort of old anime. I mean, Skulls of Shogun was largely based on sort of older '60s anime. With this one, I wanted to do the space classic sci-fi anime, you know, Macross, Robotech, uh, Star Blazers. It looks, it's like looking at the game through the lens of a classic 16-bit shooter. So it's a side-scrolling shooter, you know, shooting little dudes with lasers, pew, pew, pew. But if you kind of get under the hood a little bit, like, it's, you know, very modern. Like, we're using these huge hand-drawn particle systems, so the explosions and stuff look like a classic cartoon. I mean, we, were, we really want it to look like an old anime. So we've got some tune shading on it, hand-painted backgrounds. We've got some cool normal map kind of tricks we're doing so that the, the lights, the explosion stuff will actually light up and, like, cast off the rocks and stuff like that. And the, the AI is very deep. The inspiration originally came from basically, like, something like Halo in 2D. So the, the same kind of tactical combat and let your shields recharge and the squad ta you know, tactics of the enemies are trying to flank you and they're calling for backup and you know, they're aware of their own physicality. They're not just rushing and trying to kill you. They're actually trying to take some cover and let their shields recharge and stuff like that and you know, covering each other. So it's this very tactical space-based dogfighting combat, which is never I've never seen a game like it. It's fairly open world. It's kind of like there's big levels that are like a planet. Imagine something like Super Metroid where you go into these caves and there's these, you know, levels that are kind of hand designed and then surrounding that there's these huge asteroid fields in like deep space. It's all procedurally generated. So it's sort of micro missions. I kind of relate it to like Red Dead Redemption where you've got like towns and you've got these specific mission points that you'll go to and kick off a mission. But in the meantime, you can just explore and you'll come across random, you know, little kind of mini missions and, you know, the, the whole world feels very alive and you can just play around out there and have a great time for a long time. You can fly from planet to planet and then each system is kind of like a self-contained system that you can basically fly around that whole system. There'll be a couple levels in that and then you'll like get your main ship powered up enough to make a warp and jump to another system. There's big scary dudes out there that you really shouldn't deal with until you're more powered up later. They kind of pr patrol the perimeter of the asteroid fields, so you gotta watch out for them. But taking them on leads to huge rewards and riches and glory and all these things, so. I compare it to Super Metroid a lot. Okay. Like you start off with, you know, some health, some weapons, but you'll get better weapons, you'll get more health packs, you get better shields, you get better abilities, you kind of like ramp up. You'll do customization stuff with colors and, you know, kind of what things look like, what kind of weapons you prefer. You'll choose your loadout before you go out for missions. To me, player agency is a very key thing we throw out of the office a lot. Like, letting the player choose kind of what kind of the mood they're in. I mean, like, like Red Dead Redemption. You know, you can say, I'm going to go do these heavy combat missions and I want to be, you know, totally story-driven for all this experience. Or I want to just go screw off over here, go exploring, see what's over that ridge, see if I can find some cool stuff over there. You know, I played a lot of Fallout 3, I love that. That same sort of thing where you can kind of pace yourself. You can say, I'm gonna go out and play, or I'm gonna go do like a heavy story-based mission, and kind of leaving that open. The game started off kind of, it's more early 80s sci-fi now, is kind of the visual aesthetic target, but it started off kind of more late 70s stuff, and I love the oh, cheesy late 70s anime. And there's like the Daitaran 3 and Combatler V. So I wanted to do something, something, something. And I wanted to use the word galaxy, but I didn't want it to be like galaxy rangers or galaxy warriors or something that's just like kind of forgettable. Yeah. So I just was over and over, and then one day in the shower, I was just like, Galaxy. He's like, oh man, yeah, Daitar 3, Galaxy, Combatler V, it, it, it totally fits. And of course, the Canadians are making fun of me calling it Galaxy and same with the Brits, but <laughs> they're wrong, it's Galaxy. I mean, it'll be campy, it'll probably be a little bit more grounded than okay. Skulls of Shogun. Skulls of Shogun is pretty outrageous, pretty ridiculous, which is great. I mean, I love that stuff, and I think we'll probably bring some of that stuff in. But I mean, it's it's kind of high sci-fi, you know, melodramatic, kind of early 80s science fiction anime inspired. So I mean, we'll be playing with those tropes, but it's a little bit more down to earth. Okay. Like I knew I wanted to do this next for a long time and just been sort of, you know, keeping ideas and stuff and, uh, you know, kind of building up sketchbooks and, you know, whenever I'd find cool stuff online, I'd throw in a folder and kind of been slowly baking for a long time on the back burner. We almost went on with another one, which we'll do next. This one has been, uh, you know, actually on paper, like it was pretty thought out before I actually hired on the, the programming staff and stuff to start it up. 
Um, I'm the the lead. I uh, lead, everything. lead everything. I mean, I don't I don't do any engineering. I'm really bad with computers. I almost can't be left alone with them. But I'm the lead. You know, I'm the creator. I design the game. Uh, I design the world. Design most of the enemy types and all that stuff. I do the art for them. At least on the concept art level. Uh, I have a 3D modeler slash animator who does uh, the actual modeling of the 3D stuff. Um, I was a concept artist for years. I'll you know design the look of everything. Um, do all the, the hand-drawn art. So I'll design the characters, I design what the ships look like, I design the backgrounds, I design all the background art. And kind of art direct all the explosions and all that stuff. You know, I bring in reference and I talk to the guys about that. I mean, I really just run around all day leading. So all the creative and all the art and the CEO stuff. It just sounds like an 18-hour day. It is. And I'm still directing Skulls of Shogun. You know, we're, we're about to, sh to launch uh, on Steam uh, at the end of this month. Oh, okay. And uh, I've got two little kids at home too, so. Life is crazy these days. We just hired our eighth full-time guy. He'll start at the end of the month. I think we're we'll stay under 10, I think, full-time. We've got a couple contractors on the side we use for bits and pieces. It's, it feels quite big after three-man, you know, after a three-man operation. And like, it, this feels like a, like a big operation. I mean, I've worked on teams as big as like 60 people or something, but that's just a whole other. I mean, AAA stuff, like those are real budgets. Like we're like a tiny little scrappy thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is as big as I want to get for the kind of stuff we like to do. I'm really excited about the PlayStation 4, and, and I wanted to reach out to them and see how they felt about the game. And uh, I flew down there and showed it to them, and they were like, this is great, we should, you know, we should, we should do this. So the deal's not signed yet. We're just in negotiations, but, uh, you know, we've agreed to do something together, and we're super excited about it. We've got kits, and we're, we're moving on it. Very much in love with the PlayStation 4, so. They give feedback. I mean, they've got some big picture stuff that they want to see standardized with the next generation of gaming. You know, the video sharing and the, the kind of the stuff that they're talking about. You know, they're encouraging us to, you know, incorporate some of that stuff and think sort of next gen with like how this persistent world can stay alive and, you know, giving us some really cool ideas that we would like to address. There's so much we've all learned through the Skulls of Shogun process and we're hoping to take that four year Skulls dev cycle it turned into about half of that, so that's what we're shooting for. And so far we're on track. We've got a bigger team, we've got off-the-shelf tools, we're using Unity, which we love. Just got a great team with all the key roles filled up, and we're just pushing forward really fast right now, having a great time.